Hey, welcome. Today I talk about uh, cyclic symmetry um, in particular, uh, which is embedded in a larger topic of pattern grouping in topology optimization, which itself is also embedded in a large topic of manufacturability constraints you, you can just put on your model. So let's jump into it. Um, we have a model here, which is just a disk. And this disk has some inner board bores right and those bores are not all of them but every second bore is fixed uh, fixed means the inner nodes cannot move in any direction we have a typical non-design design space um, yeah uh, distribution in our models a red means non-design space that means those elements will stay no matter what the optimizer cannot get rid of them it will have density of one and then we have the design space, which is most of the model, which is the blue, the blue elements. Then from a um, loading side, we have a moment, which is acting in the middle and uh, distributes the, fo the force or the, yeah, the moment to the outer bores, which is used uh, for which a um, RB free element is used. So yeah, that's about the loading. And now, the thing about symmetry constraints. I mean, um, if you just look into help and you have to search for the right one, um, this case, that would be um, topology optimization manufacturing constraints or manufacturability. And here you have a pattern grouping. So um, there's a bunch of it, but one of those manufacturability constraints is pattern grouping and pattern grouping itself is more or less a uh, symmetry constraints. Um, that means you have different option of um, constraining a model. So I think everybody gets planar symmetry. I mean, that's fairly simple. You have just to define one plane and it will have a symmetry enforced on the design, which just results from the optimization. That means you have a symmetry plane and it is enforced that a density value here is reflected to another element, uh, which is the symmetric element uh, corresponding element uh, on the other side of the plane. So planar symmetry is, is all right. Now you could also have two planar symmetries, for example, like this. And so you would have two uh, corresponding elements which are forced to have the same density as one of the elements up here. Now, uh, three plane symmetry, same thing, but in this case, you have another plane and um, now I think that's all clear. But the other thing is the cyclic symmetry or cycle, cyclical symmetry. Here you have to not also give a direction for which um, the symmetry should be applied, but also you would have to define the number of repetitions because with planar symmetry, it's easy to understand how many repetitions there are. You have your point and then you have, have your planes and you reflect and that's it. But with um, cyclical symmetry, you just define an axis and this axis defines um, the rotation, but it does not define how many repetitions should occur. And there's another option to have also a additional constraint that is called one planar symmetry or cyclical symmetry with one plane. That means that each repetition itself is symmetrical in terms of that there is a plane of symmetry in the middle of this repetition. So you see, you have different kinds of um, options to go here and to just see how the results um, behave or what kind of different results you can get with cyclical symmetry. I made a few models and let them run. Um, yeah, and but just that you have the full picture, um, how to get there. So this is obviously a topology optimization manufacturability, but this is rooted in the design or no, not design. Yeah, design topology. So it's a, yeah, DTPL card. And there's the value for the um, topology pattern uh, grouping amongst others. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is the corresponding card to the design variable, which you can find here. So this you create by going to optimize and just click on topology. So uh, if I click this little um, corner icon, I can see I have now this topology design variable. And here you have to set first 
which element you shoot for in this case. And here's the pattern grouping option. And here you have side click and then you can go for node or coordinates. So you could also go for coordinates here and just define 0, 0, 0. That would be the anchor node. And the first node would be 1, 0, 0. So that means um, just if you think the center is 0, 0, 0, going 1 into the x direction would define, <coughs> sorry, that would define a vector which is rooted in the coordinate origin and is going into the direction of x. That means you have the direction of symmetry is defined by this axis. And you can define that with coordinates or either nodes, whatever you want to choose. And then you have this u psych, which is um, the number of cyclic rep repetitions, which is basically exactly that, what we just talked about. So the number of repetitions is also chosen here. And so if you don't know about what number to choose here, you can go for different um, approaches. One indicator could be the number of constraints here. So for example, if you have a um, one, two, three, four, five, six number of bolts which are fixed in place, it may be a good idea to choose six or three or any kind of divisible by three uh, option here. But if you're not sure about it, um, yeah, and also the loading positions, right? If you have three loadings, that means uh, maybe three is a good option. So from your loading symmetry, you can kind of guess what to put in here. Um, but if you don't know it, and um, just easy way and just no brainer is to just choose different values and just check how good your optimization results are. And I did that for you. So I have made a little PowerPoint here. So you can see here um, with 5% volume frag constraint, I chose different kind of repetition values. So from one to nine, I have just run the same model once again and you see that you're getting different results and how do you how do you just choose which is better well um, in this case i had a minimized compliance um, optimization with the objective minimized compliance and that means that i just look which is the best value and you see that if you have one this is the best one obviously why uh, because there's no symmetry constraint at all. If you have use cycle one, that means you have, in fact, no cyclic symmetry uh, condition. Because that means you have one repetition around the full circle. So it can do whatever it wants. And that is also very important to understand that you have, if you have symmetry or manufacturability constraint, this will most likely make your model a little bit worse. Because it's it's imposed as an additional constraint. And whenever the solver wants to go in a direction of the design space where it cannot, because the constraint is there, it will worsen the result of your objective. So in this case, you see here, the compliance is 0 0.05 here, and this is the best value we would expect to get. Now with two, you have Z, different structure and maybe not, does not make really sense because you don't see that um, it's connected everywhere, right? So that it's kind of odd to me. Um, and you see you're getting a much worse value. And so you can just walk through here. And with three, you get a pretty good result. It looks almost identical with the non-constrained um, thing here. There are some differences, <clears throat> but um, yeah, minor differences. Four, lot worse. Five, lot worse. Six, again, a bit worse, but yeah, um, still kind of better than five and four, seven, oh my god, eight, not at all, and uh, nine is okay-ish again. Now, what you can see here, and this is also a um, observation you can get with such kind of things, you see 5% of volume constraints. So this is really low. And you see that some structures didn't make it quite. Um, they're not really um, connected and they're very thin and not really on the design spectrum of one. So that could be an indicator that your volume constraint, volume frag constraint is too hard. So just relax it a little. So I went for 10%. And you see the structures still are not connecting and that's really no nothing I can really explain right from here. But you see that the structure will get a lot more um, obvious to you and different, right? So you can see how it is able to, for, uh, to just choose different routes and to more get the model into a one and zero design. So that means 
you have a density of one or zero, but nothing in between. So this is really what you shoot for. And you can see for models which where this is really good, like for one, obviously, but also for three and for six, maybe. Um, those are the kind of values you want to go for. Again, you can look at the compliance and see what lowest compliance is possible. And you see three and one, they seem to be the same, right? So almost. All right, you can also go for 15% and you could just go further and you see that the structures are more clear to you, are more connected. And um, yeah, so I would encourage you to do a lot of those kind of simulations to just see how your structure behaves. And um, yeah, this is all I have now for this uh, introductionary video. I will be doing a another video, which is not just cyclic symmetry constraints, but more or less um, how you get automated values for each um, output symmetry. Um, so in this case, you have the compliance value and uh, you want, you have a bunch of folders and you want to have just all values with one click. And I will, um, I will do another video for, for that. But for the meantime, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. If you have any comments, questions regarding symmetry constraints, just drop them in the comments. Um, yeah. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.